Welcome to the how-to guide of AutoGraphQL. To start using this tool, we'd need to get a schema from the URL. It takes the schema in JSON format. You can find a static URL that has the GraphQL schema available such as Shopify. But for the most of the case, you would need to run an introspection call to get the schema file in the JSON format. Then you can host the file on GitHub and put it here. After entering the schema file URL, it would take a few seconds to process it. And we can see the tool has simplified the process of building the queries and mutations manually and has generated the completed queries for us to use. Simply select the queries that you are interested in testing and then proceed to the next step. Here, I will pick sign in as guest and user phone number confirm initiate and proceed to the next step. To fully test the authorization cases, you can provide all the credentials that you can think of, such as read only access token or a profile only access token or credentials in different stage such as pre-email confirmation stage or credentials in password reset stage or credentials that are in disabled stage and then prepare the same type of credentials but this time is for another entity. After entering all the credentials, you can select the credentials you want and proceed to the next step. Here, we can enter the endpoint that accepts the GraphQL calls. And after clicking Save, the combinations from the selected queries and credentials would be executed against this endpoint. After a few minutes, depending on the size of your combinations, you should see the job status is now finished. Then we can proceed to fill the report details. In the report section, we can see the query used, the type of query, the name of the credentials, response status code, and the response body. By going through the list, we can easily spot any unexpected authorization problem, such as user A is not supposed to be able to see user B's phone number, or a user should not be able to use the GraphQL after their account is being banned. So you can see, this tool is not designed to return the same results for anyone who uses it. Instead, everyone can use this tool in their own way and get their own meaningful results. This is created just to make the process of authorization testing more enjoyable and easy. If you can think of anything that would be cool to be included in this tool, drop a comment below and let us know. Thank you for watching. See you next time.